Experiments in Physics with Dr. Frank Oppenheimer was produced in cooperation with University of Colorado Television. This is University of Colorado Television. Experiments in Physics with Dr. Frank Oppenheimer. A brief demonstration of the equipment used in the Library of Experiments in Physics produced in cooperation with University of Colorado Television. Today's experiment... The experiment on the variable spacing capacitor um, is in two parts. The first part allows one to study the potential on a high voltage plate um, when it's kept at constant charge. This is the grounded plate. The second part enables one to measure the charge on a high voltage plate when it's kept at constant potential. Let's look at the um, constant charge part first. This has a hard rubber rod, uh, which is a very good insulator and of course must be good and clean in order to keep the charge from leaking off. A power supply uh, here gives five kilovolts. It's driven by this one. Um, and the lead from the five kilovolt supply is normally kept in a little protective hole here, but it can be taken out and put in either touch to or put in this little banana plug so that it touches the high voltage plate. Um, then when uh, this is on standby, um, and this turned all the way down, one turns it to on, and as one turns this up, watches this, meter to start with to make sure nothing shorted, that the current doesn't rise above about 50 milliamps, and then gradually turns it up and looks at the electrostatic voltmeter. But the first thing that you want to do is discharge the plates, touch the grounded place first, and then touch the high voltage plate, and then you'll want to zero the electrostatic voltmeter with this knob on top, tapping it a little bit to be sure that it's right on zero. And then we can turn up the high voltage, gradually watching both this meter and the electrostatic voltmeter. And now you can see it's beginning to come up. And now it's a little over the full scale, five kilovolts. And I'll take this off and put it back in its protective hole and leave this on standby. Uh, now, the charge will leak off there even if I just touch this wire. So one wants to be sure that none of the wires leading to the plate are at all um, are near any ground. But one can also make use of that to set the voltage at any point one wants to. For example, now it's just a little over two kilovolts. If I hold it for a moment, the voltage will drop right to two kilovolts. And I can do start doing an experiment. For example, if I want to see how the voltage goes as I um, move from one place to another, I simply um, can measure the distance here now and know what the separation is to start with. And then I can plot the voltage as I pull this back and keep measuring the distance and make a graph and notice it isn't changing very much. As I push it in, the voltage will drop. Another way of using it is to move it between fixed stops. But um, before one does any of this, one should make sure that the two plates are parallel. Let's look at that again. I'll discharge this. And the minimum spacing one should use is about three millimeters. Otherwise, one can get sparks. These spaces are three or 3.1 millimeters, and one can use them to check that the plates are parallel. It's a little tight right here, so I will loosen this screw, which pushes on this rounded plate, and it's a little loose on this other side, and I'll tighten that. And now the spacers fit in nicely all over. I can set the minimum distance with this stop, 
And suppose I want to move it between two fixed stops, then I can just use all three spacers, pull it back, and the plate should remain parallel. I can fasten this, and now I can charge it up again. I'll put that over there. I'll just hold this to touch this to here and raise it up to a little over five kilovolts. There, put it on standby and put that back. And now, well, I've touched it too much. Let me try it again. There. It's leaking a little because today is a very damp day. And now I'll push it in and measure the potential at three millimeters and then measure the potential again and do that several times to make sure there isn't any leakage and see which there is a, a little bit today. And in this way, I can see um, how the potential varies with the separation for a constant charge. Um, I can also, as I pull it apart, when it's apart a little ways, I can put slabs of dielectric in and see what that does to the potential as I put it in and out. Um, in this way, I can not only um, determine the edge effects, or at least with the help of the second part of the experiment, determine the edge effects, but since the charge is shared between this plate and the electrostatic voltmeter, by plotting the potential as a function of separation, I can find out what the capacitance of the electrostatic voltmeter itself must be. Um, Remember that always to discharge these plates um, because they can give a nasty shock, although they can't kill you. Let's look at the second part of the experiment now. Um, here, uh, we, we use not an electrostatic voltmeter, but we use a ballistic galvanometer to measure the um, variation of the charge as it goes um, uh, as this discharges. This plate is kept at constant potential by this power supply, and the circuit is such that the grounded plate uh, is connected to ground either through this switch when it's closed or when the switch is open th through the uh, ballistic galvanometer. The ballistic galvanometer measures the current for a very short time. It gets an impulse and it integrates the current over a short time, and the total swing is a measure of the total charge that fell through it. Again, one must turn the light on, and then make sure it's, this is a very delicate instrument that it's balanced. There are two, uh, uh, two uh, leveling screws here and a, a bubble level on top, but it is level now. And then with this switch closed, one unclamps it. Again, gently, first you push down on the clamp and then pull it over a little bit till it fits in its other notch free on the other side. And then one can see the spot of light there. If I open this switch, it's less highly damp and it'll begin to swing and we can see where the zero is. And then when one wants to set the zero, not exactly at zero, but someplace around one so you can see some motion to the left but most of the motion to the right. And it's somewhat damped by a resistor, so it settles down to a value if you wait a while and stays quite nice. Notice we have it on a separate table so that the motion of this or the switch doesn't shake it. Um, it ought to stay there, not forever because there's small contact potentials, but um, one can always bring it back by allowing it to swing. The power supply for this is a little tricky. Um, it uh, is a power supply which goes up to 15 kilovolts, um, but we use it because it has a uh, convenient relay in it. One turns it on, one always has to turn the variac down uh, before you can get any voltage, then it turns the voltage on by um, pushing this upper button. You heard the relay open. When I close it, you hear the relay shut. That shorts the two, the outputs together so that the current runs quickly through the galvanometer. Let me do, turn it on again. Once it's on, I can then raise the voltage. 
Um, if I put these very close together, the three millimeters, uh, normally that's all right if I raise the voltage to two kilovolts. And now I'll open this switch and see what happens. And I see the galvanometer going off to the left. That's because, again, because of the damp day, there's a little leakage. So I won't be able to work at such close spacings. I'll try a little larger, say a half a centimeter or a centimeter spacing as my minimum spacing. Um, now I'll op open this and let it come to zero. I'll put this down to zero, turn this on, bring this up to two kilovolts. Open this switch and let it come to zero. Wait a moment, and then discharge it. Then the galvanometer will measure the charge by the length of the swing. It wasn't a very big swing since the plates are fairly far apart. So being that far apart, I'll stop this at zero. I think I can use a larger voltage. I'll go up to four kilovolts. I'll open that, it's just about at zero and staying there. I'll discharge it. And now I get a reasonable swing, which is so I can measure the charge fairly accurately. I'll catch this as it comes back so that it stays at zero. So I can measure the charge on this at a given potential and a given spacing. But I can do more than that. I'll raise it up to four kilovolts. I'll open this and make sure that it stays at zero. And this time, I'll move it from where it was, which was spacing I was measured, to another stop. Stop makes it easy to move quickly to a second spacing. And I get a deflection because I've driven charge off the grounded plate. Then I'll stop it at zero. Well, there may be some charge still on the grounded plate. I can find out how much that is by now discharging it. And again, I get a deflection. If I were to get a deflection in the wrong direction when I discharge it, all I'd have to do is interchange the two galvanometer leads, um, and it would bring it in the right direction. Uh, one should not get closer ever than three millimeters, and to begin with, one should never start with more than two kilovolts, although, as we've seen, as the spacing gets larger, one can then afford to use higher voltages to give reasonable deflections on the galvanometer. Again, the reminder that one shouldn't touch the high voltage plate when it's charged up, and that this is a very delicate instrument. This switch should be closed uh, when everyone isn't taking a measurement, and whenever you leave the device, be sure that it's clamped. But one of the interesting things that you can do here is really learn what the edge effects of the condenser are by seeing how the amount of charge on it varies with the spacing, and you can check the linearity of the amount of charge with the potential um, for any spacing, provided you don't never raise the voltage too high for close spacings. I think that describes most of the precautions and the operations that are needed to work this experiment.